turnovers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when, when you saw us cut down on our turnovers and the ball move there in the second half, uh, I thought we showed who we could become from an offensive standpoint. Uh, so with that said, really looking forward uh, to this opportunity on Thursday before we go into the break. Uh, guys have worked extremely hard in practice. Uh, we had two practices yesterday. We went this morning. We'll come back again this afternoon and uh, look forward to getting back out here in the PMAC on Thursday night uh, against Lamar. At the um, <clears throat> first half, um, struggles are, you know, obviously the Nichols game comes to mind, and then a little bit of Alabama State the other night, and then another one again Saturday. Is it kind of mind-boggling that you keep having this, that you have to keep coming from behind in the second half and putting something together? Well, Sheldon, I think there's a, a pretty simple formula that you're finding uh, the differences in the two halves. The first half Saturday, uh, we gave up 10 points off – second chance opportunities, and we gave up 15 points off our turnovers. So 25 points there, uh, self-inflicted, uh, so to say. In the second half, uh, that number came down to seven. And so we, we limited their second chance opportunities uh, and did a much better job taking care of the ball. Uh, I think our defensive energy, uh, intensity, and, and, and focus uh, has been much better. And then on the other side of the ball, our offensive execution has been much better. I think we had 44 uh, in the second half Wednesday and then 48 uh, in the second half Saturday. Uh, so I know we've talked about it before, but uh, sustaining uh, more consistent play and longer stretches uh, continues to be an area of improvement for us. Yeah, Coach, um, is there an update on uh, Damian Collins and his timeline right now? Yeah, Damian had his first full contact practice yesterday. Uh, we'll see how he responds this afternoon. I thought he looked good, uh, ran the floor extremely well, made a couple plays up above the rim. Uh, so we'll see how he practices uh, the rest of the week, and, and I'll have an update on his status for Thursday's game after that. And um, the center position, uh, especially with Jalen back, just how do you evaluate You know what you need from that specific um, offensively, especially trying to figure out you know the personnel? Yeah, I think just balance. Uh, I think you see uh, with Jalen's ability off ball screens, um, you know, it opens up the spacing on the floor, uh, opens up opportunities for a, a forward as a screen and roll threat, uh, which we hope will lead to some some other post up opportunities as well. Uh, so I, I think it's like anything. You know, that was Jalen Cook's first game, you know, and since I guess early March. Uh, so he'll have to knock some of the rust off there. Um, and it was, for our forwards, the first time playing with him uh, in a real game setting. Uh, he was out injured uh, when we went to the Bahamas this summer. Uh, so it'll just take a little bit of time uh, to, to continue to build that chemistry. Obviously, they've gotten to practice together, but uh, nothing like being under those game lights. How did you notice Jalen kind of handle everything that's going on with the NCAA and the two-time transfers and then finally able to get there out on the court on Saturday? Well, I think he handled it really well. I think he took advantage of the time um, while we were waiting on a ruling throughout the summer and fall. Uh, always tried to challenge him to be prepared when his opportunity came. We never knew when that phone call might come through. I think he worked hard. Uh, he's invested a lot of time in the gym. Uh, I think game conditioning, uh, you'll see that improve as we go along. Uh, but I think you saw, especially in that second half, how he opens up the floor. Uh, he had six assists, only one turnover. He also rebounded well at the guard spot for us. Uh, so I think you'll just see him get more and more comfortable as he gets more, more game action. What are your thoughts on how the whole situation is playing out with the NCAA and in the courts, and what do you think is going to come of it? Well, I'm excited for Jalen. I I think his was a unique transfer uh, compared to some of the other situations that were were out there. You know, being a player who started out at LSU, uh, returning to LSU 20 minutes from home, uh, it helped him from an academic progress standpoint uh, because he didn't lose any hours. You know, transferring to three or four schools, uh, so I, I think his situation was very unique. And uh, that, that used to be the rule in the past. If you ever transferred back to your previous institution, you were eligible right away. So uh, I think his circumstances were a lot different than, 
than the uh, the others affected by the court rulings. Yeah, I know you guys started the second half with Jay, uh, Jalen out there. Did you expect that to kind of carry over into the game on Thursday, that, that he's going to be kind of in that starting unit? And then just Jordan Wright, I mean, went really ballistic there in the second half for yeah. you guys. Just it really feels like he's kind of found his groove. Just, just what has he given you uh, and what do you expect from him going forward? Yeah, starting with Jalen, he'll, he'll start on Thursday. Uh, I think he practiced really well yesterday. Uh, and, and look forward to having him in the starting lineup. Uh, with Jordan, uh, his individual offensive performance was terrific. You know, 33 points on only 14 shots. You don't, you don't see that very often. Uh, so he was really efficient, uh, shot it well from three. Uh, but I think a lot of that opened up because of his aggressiveness getting to the basket, which in turn got him to the free throw line. I think he was 10 of 10 from the free throw line. And then I thought, you know, the, these are the things that are important to me because I think they'll allow us to get better as a team. Uh, we, we obviously did not play well in the first half. Uh, I thought his leadership in the second half uh, from the halftime conversations to the timeout huddles uh, to his energy and effort and communication on the floor was awesome, and, and that's what we need from him. Uh, and I think a lot of our other players took confidence from that. Uh, and, and that'll give us an opportunity to keep getting better moving forward for sure. Now that you have, have Jalen back, you, you kind of feel like you're kind of complete. Like, I mean, this is this is the team I, I wanted to start the season with, and and obviously the second half at Texas, you looked like that kind of team you wanted. Well, it changes how we can play uh, with with Jalen's skill set and his ability to play in ball screens. Uh, so that that's exciting for us. I think it opens up the floor for everyone else. Uh, you saw, I think we were 11 to 25 from three in the game. Uh, so the, the spacing was a lot better out there on the court for us. Uh, our, our turnovers came down in the second half. Uh, I think it allows us to be a, a much more explosive and efficient offensive team, uh, not only in transition, but also in the half court. I was going to ask you about Jordan and also um, making everybody better, like you said earlier. But Jordan said after the game that it kind of, the basket, the rim seemed bigger. I mean, does that kind of tell you exactly what Jalen brings that everybody can get involved like that? Well, I think, you know, not to echo the same things, but the spacing was just really good on the floor. Uh, I thought Hunter Dean did a terrific job in, in the ball screens. Uh, and he does a good job rolling to the rim. He puts pressure on the basket, which opens up some threes for other guys. Um, but I thought just the ability to space the floor and Jordan to, to have that balance in his game uh, of scoring inside, getting to the free throw line, opened up his three-point game. Uh, and then uh, you know, I want to say the second half, we were maybe nine to four assist to turnover. We really cut down the turnovers. So it allows you to be a lot more efficient. Uh, the, the turnovers, have, they're just backbreakers. Because obviously not only do you score, uh, but the odds are you're going to give up some points in transition. And you saw that in the first half. And that's why we got off to such a poor start. So uh, ball security will continue to be a huge point of emphasis for us. You mentioned, and we're kind of Al asking the same question here, but Hunter Dean, I mean, all, all these pieces that you kind of have flowing together, talk about Dean and how he kind of fit into the plan uh, last time out and your excitement to see how he continues to evolve from what happened. Well, he's he's really – incredibly intelligent as a basketball player, uh, both ends of the floor. So uh, he understands spacing uh, and schemes on the offensive side of the ball. And then defensively, I think he does a great job of, you know, we would call it see it, see it and fix it. You know, he sees a lot of mistakes uh, that are made, and he's able to fix them um, through his activity level. And so, you know, I want him to continue to play with great energy and confidence. And I think he brings a physical presence uh, to our front court. Uh, Coach, what's the key to getting more consistency out of Will Baker in terms of his numbers and yeah. being more steady there? Yeah, Will's going to be fine. Uh, he got really sick. He missed uh, you know, in and out of practice for a couple weeks. Uh, he's getting back healthy. Uh, the, the biggest key is he just needs to forget about you know, some of the challenges of the last few games and just come to practice. Keep working hard. He, he invests a ton of time uh, in the gym. And uh, go out and play with great energy and have fun. Uh, he, he's going to be fine. I look forward to the impact he's going to make on our team 
uh, as we go go to these last two con non-conference games. Excuse me. Coach, like you mentioned, not two more non-conference games, and then you guys are in your conference schedule. How is this non-conference season that you've had to start, the ebbs and flows of it, how has it prepared your team for conference play, and where do you think they're at heading into that? Well, it's, it's been very up and down, as you said, you know, moving parts uh, with the lineup and so forth. But, you know, the, the only thing that matters is what we do moving forward. And so I think our guys really responded well uh, to yesterday's practice probably the best practice we've had all year. Now you hope that carries over to the game floor, obviously. But uh, I, th I think the focus just has to be on getting better. Uh, we added a new piece uh, in Jalen Cook. Uh, now we have to build the chemistry around that. Uh, and the goal is to build consistency. And so that's what we'll try to be very intentional in, in how we prepare. Um, but you know, excited to take advantage of this opportunity Thursday to get better and, and, and try to get back in the win column. And then we'll take the Christmas break and come back and do the same uh, heading into our final non-conference game uh, and just keep that narrow focus just on consistent improvement and getting better and uh, enjoying playing, having fun playing. Going back to Hunter Dean, he got 28 minutes the other night, probably more than he played that, that all the other games. Do, do you see him getting more and more, or it's just a game by game basis? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, ultimately, it comes down to performance, uh, and and that's how you get to the to the floor. You know, consistent performance and practice, and then it has to carry over to the game floor, and who can impact winning, and that's what we're searching for. And I, I thought he was. You know, really good, not only on the offensive end, you know, with the 11 points there in the first half, but just defensively, I thought he brought a great presence to our team, uh, had us organized. Um, you know, that stretch where we just gave up 11 points in 11 minutes uh, is who we need to be from a defensive standpoint. Our energy, our effort, our communication, uh, I thought was much improved there. I'm sure you'll be asked this after the game on Thursday, but in your experience, how do you handle that long layoff? Because after a second half against Texas, I know, like you said, these guys want to play. They just want to keep playing in those game-like atmospheres. How do you handle that with essentially, what, two games in almost a two-week span? Or three weeks, yeah, however long it is. Yeah, I mean, first off, you know, keeping the main thing the main thing. You want your players to go enjoy their, their time with their family uh, and friends and celebrate Christmas and – and get away for a few days. Uh, and then you just come back and, and you try to be very intentional in, in how you go about building your team, getting better. Uh, I think we all know the areas we've talked about, you know, cutting down turnovers, improving our defensive rebounding, our three-point defense, uh, and just continue to, to focus on those every single day. Uh, and then I think the ultimate thing there is when you have that long of a stretch without games is, uh, the practices can be really competitive. And it gives players opportunities uh, to increase their role on the team uh, by showing that they impact winning. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you Thursday.